Hey everybody, it's Travis with Subsurface Solutions. I am here to talk about electromagnetic fields and antenna configurations in the RD 8100 and 7100 receivers. So, what antenna configuration do we use? There's, you know, a multitude of uh, five different antennas that you can select from on the 8100 and why? Why so many? So, let's talk about that. For the most part, locators are simple tools. They detect electromagnetic fields. Receivers pick up that electromagnetic field as they cross through it. And the current being generated within that receiver indicates the presence of a signal. The stronger the signal, the greater the induced current. As a receiver moves horizontally through that electromagnetic field, the current increases and it decreases relative to that proximity. Of course, the amount of current the receiver picks up, it will communicate through an audible tone or a visual display, letting the user know where the strongest signal is. So the source of that electromagnetic field, it can be a transmitter, and, but not always, it can be a passive signal as well. So uh, power lines, uh, cathodically protected gas lines, radio station signals, virtually every pipe and cable that has metal on it our continuity, it carries some kind of electro charge, electromagnetic charge, and so it creates that magnetic field and we can go detect it. Even the earth itself has a strong magnetic field. With all the electrical noise around us, it's important that we understand how we translate what we hear and see on our locators. What is the locator telling us? And it's telling us that through those different antennas. And so there's, there's five antennas all together in the radio detection unit. One hollow round core antenna in the middle, surrounded by four ferrite core antennas. Ferrite core is a type of magnetic core used for its properties of high magnetic permeability coupled with the low electrical conductivity, which helps prevent Cousin Eddie currents. Nobody wants Cousin Eddie to visit. So, in short, they read all frequencies cleaner and concentrate the signal into a smaller pathway making the locator lighter, ergonomically sexy, and more accurate. So the center round antenna, the one in the middle, it controls a compass that's on the screen all the time unless the user doesn't want it on the screen. They can shut it off by going into the advanced menu system by hitting the on off key real quick. But the compass, it detects the position of the magnetic field, which should match the direction of your target line. If the target line starts to turn, the compass will direct you the way of your current. And so whichever way your current's headed, that compass will tilt that direction. For example, if you're locating a gas service or a water service out to a main, when you get close to the main, you have two magnetic fields intersecting right there, causing the compass to tilt whichever direction more of your current's going. So when you're right over the two pipes or the intersection, you may see it go to the left or to the right. If it's directly lined up with the field or two fields at once, it's going to be confused. If there's multiple signals, your automated depth reading won't display if it's tilted because it knows the field's not clean and therefore an accurate depth, it's not possible to calculate. So I'd rather not give you anything than to give you the wrong depth. So the same goes for a multi-line corridor. If your compass is attracted to the neighboring pipe or cable next to it, yeah, attracted to the neighbor, it's gonna to tilt towards it. It's gonna point that direction. It's going to uh, go to the left or go to the right, depending on which way your magnetic field is gravitating to. And so it's a good indication that you have interference in the direction your locator is mislocating. So it's pointing away from your actual cable. So in the neighboring line, if the neighbor line is destructive interference, it will tilt away. If your locate is constructive interference, it will point towards it. Until you're in a clean area again, it, it's going to stay tilted. And this is a good indication um, when you're not isolated. Your signal's not properly isolated. We talk about isolating your signal in another video, and you can, I'll probably put a link on the screen right here uh, so you can consult that. But the alignment of aerial antennas, the other four, it, it's uh, linked to the reaction of the response as it travels through the electromagnetic field. A circular electromagnetic field, as it's coming to the surface above ground, it's wide and it's semi-curved horizontal antenna at, at formation. And so uh, it, it, the aerial antenna laying in a horizontal direction will give 
a large peak response when it's perfectly aligned over the apex of that field, or over the top of it. And this is known as a peak response. In contrast, a vertical antenna with null, it will null out. It will get nothing when it's over the apex of the signal because it's perfectly perpendicular to that signal now. So you get nothing, but you do get a response, a peak response if you're to the left or to the right of the line. So no response over the target line means it's completely perpendicular. No, nothing, no magnetic field coming through it. The benefit though of a peak antenna versus a null is that they allow for a larger sample size. The current and the user can determine the orientation of the signal because as you're turning the receiver, you can see the signal strength go down and you can see it go up as you're perpendicular to the signal and the, and the, the magnetic field's going through the antennas. Horizontal antennas are the, they're the best choice for locating utility lines by far, which, you know, anything horizontal is going to pick up the signal, a horizontal signal, you know, when you're locating a horizontal line, the best. It ignores lines crossing perpendicularly. So if you got a, a, a if you're locating a gas line and you got an electric line or you got a cable TV line crossing you, it's not going to pick it up unless you're holding the receiver the wrong way. It's, it ignores everything that's perpendicular to what you're locating. So that's a good thing. They're a good choice for locating anywhere near T's and elbows because they won't pick up the interference from the per perpendicular magnetic fields crossing your path. You get a much tighter locate at that turn. Vertical antennas give you a null response when directly over the line because their field does not flow through the aerial antenna when you're perfectly over it. When you move through that aerial, uh, that uh, on either side, the field flows through the antenna, but given... Um, right over the top of it you get nothing or no response uh, it's easier to to hear the response on a null antenna because you get absolutely nothing and you have actual arrows to direct you the direction of the line people love arrows they love to see what direction the line is it makes for training real easy however it's vulnerable to interference because when something's crossing you, no matter what direction it's going, it's only picking up what's directly under me, underneath it. So if you're over an elbow or a T, it has a harder time uh, indicating which line is which. It has no orientation to it. So we try to get people not to use the null mode. I usually say null mode is uh, basically cruise control. If you're in an area with no interference, nothing else around, put it on cruise control. Go ahead and go. It, it's nice to cruise along once in a while, just follow the arrows, but the arrows are also training wheels. And they do help get you in the area, but once you're in a congested area, you better take that locator off cruise control, buddy. You better start doing a manual control and go back to peak mode and, and uh, pay attention to your peak response. The very bottom antenna is represented by a small hill icon. This is called single peak mode. It's a peak response uh, where the bar graph and the numbers are greater when you're directly over the strongest part of the magnetic field. So a tide mark, a little tick mark, will show up when you get your peak response. It identifies where the location of that line is and where you got your highest response. It's much faster to, to just follow that bar graph on top than the numbers itself. So the single peak mode is the most accurate antenna response because it's closest to the ground and to the center of the magnetic field. The only drawback is that it's using a single antenna and creates a wider peak response, making it less evident when you're directly over the target. The audio and visual response, it's wider too. So it's, it's just a little bit harder to go fast in this response. It makes for a quicker audio and visual response on a dual horizontal peak antenna. Those, that's a much better choice. So, when you see uh, an experienced locator using a locator, this is the this is the preference that they have. The, the dual peak mode, it's represented by a large hill icon. The dual peak mode also has more acute and quick visual and audio response, making it a preferred mode for most experienced locators. It's mostly used by the um, just the audio. They they listen to the audio response and they get used to not watching the screen. And that that does help because when you're out there doing a lot of locates in heavy traffic areas, you want to make sure you're not running into cars and and uh, running into other trees and looking out for dogs coming at you. So the dual antennas also allow for some fancy algorithms to be implemented by radio detection, which we'll get into in just a moment. 
because guidance mode has it too. And guidance mode is the next one I'm going to talk about. It's the dual vertical antenna mode, which is almost as accurate as dual peak mode, but you're using the vertical null antennas. But the gain co control on this mode is automatic, which makes it real easy to use. And uh, people that aren't familiar with radio detection units, this is the first one they should gravitate to. This one will get them used to the using the locator and all the other uh, bells and whistles on the locator, and then they can gr gr you know, graduate up to the next level and start using peak response. But the guidance mode, it takes advantage of those twin aerials and also applies some, some really fancy filtering and algorithms to provide a very accurate locate. The, the guidance mode is a good choice uh, when you're new to it. So between guidance mode and dual peak mode, they both uh, use a fancy algorithm, um, but the peak and the null combined mode, the next one, that's the one I like. It's exactly how it sounds. It uses all four antennas simultaneously. You get uh, the same response that you would if you're using them individually. Uh, so why do this? Uh, well, because it's like using two styles of locators in one. If your arrow response is the same as your peak response, they're in the same spot you probably got a good locate. So what do you do if they don't agree? Well, that's the big question. When, do you, when your peak and your null don't agree, what do you do next? Well, the dual peak is the most accurate. Guidance peak is still pretty darn accurate. But then we got single peak mode, we got single null mode. Remember back in 8th grade when you're taught to apply the Pythagorean theorem to determine the unknown sides in a right triangle in a real world and mathematical problems in two and three dimensions? Yeah, me neither. I don't really remember that at all. But this isn't quite that complicated. It's, it's about triangulation. Locating perfect round magnetic fields, it's, that's easy. Any antenna configuration will do fine. A single antenna will do fine. But what if there's a curve to it? What if that magnetic field is being distorted? Two magnetic fields in the same area, they either push away or they pull together just like two magnets would. It's called destructive and constructive interference. So signal that travels in opposite directions, they detract or they push off, causing the locate to go further away from one another and from the interfering line. So um, when signals traveling in the same direction on two lines and near each other, they're going to pull towards each other. It's known as constructive interference. So destructive, they're going opposite directions. Constructive, they're going the same direction. But radio detection, they use multiple antennas in a fancy patented algorithm way, and they filter all that information coming in to give you a good locate response. So when using the dual peak antenna mode or the dual null guidance mode, the machine is comparing the response it gets from the bottom antenna to the top antenna. The bottom antenna will give you a good true response closer to the center of that magnetic field. And the top antenna will gravitate a little bit more towards where that magnetic field is being pushed or pulled. So it's going to mislocate a little bit more. But by using the difference between the two, at a known distance, which is you know, the distance between those two antennas and the receiver, and doing its own differential correction that radio detection applies to it, it's able to push you in the right direction. It's able to kind of correct itself and provide a more accurate locate response. So, so when using the combined peak and null, it gives you all the info at once. But within the peak and null, you have two different types of null mode responses. The null mode, the old school null mode, uh, the single antenna null mode, can be activated by holding down on the antenna button for a long press. And so you'll see the word null show up on the bottom left-hand corner. And if you hold it another two seconds, you'll see the word guide show up down there. And that's guidance arrows. And so the bottom left-hand corner is where it appears. But the null style antennas use a single vertical antenna. The guide style arrows use the more elongated uh, arrows telling you how far away you are from the line. And so it, you can verify it by just looking how long those arrows are. And if they get smaller as you get closer to it, you're on guidance arrows. But if you just hold long press hold that button down, you'll see the word guide or null to show you between the two. So. Some people like the old school mode. They like the single an null antenna. They compare it to the dual peak antenna. They like to work their own theorem and 
and triangulate it themselves and that's kind of how I got to learning uh, locating under an RD400 series locator uh, but today uh, things are a lot easier um, it, you just um, me I just like to lift the locator up use peak null combined mode lift the locator up a foot and if it locates in a different spot when you lift it up a foot you got a distorted magnetic field and by how far it goes to the left and to the right will kind of determine which way your magnetic field is distorting and how bad you're mislocating. If your depth reading after lifting it up a foot says 14 inches deeper, you know you're off by about two inches. It gives you an idea of how bad you're mislocating. And so that dual peak and dual null peak null combined mode that radio detection has on there is by far one of the best inventions locators have and it's very easy to understand because you got arrows the arrows are also distance arrows telling you how far you are and plus it's a very quick locate locate response when you go over the top of the line it's almost real time exactly you know when you're on it you'll see the guys using the radio detection units out in the field um, run a lot faster and, and they'll just locate quicker because they're going off the audio response only they can hear that peak response they're, you know nice and quick going through those ferrite rods and uh, they're able to also locate on lower frequencies underneath power lines because they got the extra filtering and the nice ferrite rods allowing that signal to come cleanly through the easiest way to learn the antenna responses is to create an electromagnetic loop on the floor with your extra 30 foot yellow spool of wire that came with your radio detection unit. It should have been on the bottom tray of your transmitter when you receive the unit. You probably lost it by now, but if you don't have it, you can go ahead and create one yourself. Just take some speaker wire or extension cable and loop it on the floor. Put the both sides of the loop about three, four foot away from each other and hook your red lead to one side, hook your black lead to the other and turn your transmitter on to any frequency. Just use eight kilohertz to start off, but go ahead and try them all. But what you're creating here is a destructive magnetic field. It's gonna push away from each other. And so your response, no matter what antenna configuration you use, is going to push away from that other line. You're gonna see it. And if you go ahead and change frequencies, maybe to a little higher frequency or a lower frequency, you're going to see a little difference. But by going between your different antenna configurations, you're going to see that the dual peak and the dual null, the guidance mode and the dual peak antenna modes are by far the most accurate locate. And if you want to have some fun, go ahead and invite your simple jack friend that's using uh, uh, you know, his mediocre locator down the street in and uh, hook his locator up and see what his does. Compare your locator, your 8100 receiver, to some others that are in the office and um, show off your smoking hot radio detection unit. And impress those rascals with your diamond cut precision ferrite core antennas and the newfound way of your mutton busting those magnetic fields and go get yourself some. It's your day. Go live and go locate. Be safe my friends and uh, safe digging for everybody. And if you got any questions, you know how to reach us, subsurfacesolutions.com. I'm Travis. Thanks.